All right, you're welcome back. You're still watching Ways. Now, today is the United Nations International Day for Mine Awareness and Assistance in Mine Action. This day raises a, um, this day aims to raise awareness about landmines and progress and their progress towards eradication. International Day for Mine Awareness and Assistance in Mine Action calls for continued effort to encourage states to establish and develop national mine action capacity. This is done because mines and explosive remnants of war constitute a serious threat to the safety, health and lives of the civilian population and also an impediment to social and economic development in any country. Yeah, absolutely. I think landmines are one of the things that we, nobody ever takes note of it. So I think it's very good that we have a day assigned to it because I remember reading one time in the news that after post Biafra war, the civil war, that there are still some landmines in Southeast, which I think a couple of them sued the federal government. That is still a pending case. And also I was reading um, from the mines advisory group that in three years, that's from 2016 to 2019, there has been about 393 um, cases of victims of landmines that were planted by the insurgent group Boko Haram. You know, so it's good that our attention is drawn to, to this and that the federal government is looking at those places that you know, possibly might have those things because the, the, it's, it's terrible when you're a victim of it. You can have a leg or an arm or even Everything. lose your life. And, yeah, and even so part of not, this awareness also, it helps to raise the yeah. people that have suffered um, um, a loss of um, um, a limb a body or, part yeah. or whatever because of the the mines they also help um, they're also raising mm -hmm. awareness also for for the cause I, I think it's a good one for yeah the, yeah and if possible an agency should like take their time to just clear out those battle fronts where they possibly would have planted it mm -hmm. you know because eventually some cases 50 years down the line it's still there and absolutely. affecting people absolutely so today we decided to go to the positive side so what did you find for us in the news <laughs> okay so um earlier earlier this week there was a story of two young men from um, in, in Jaws, uh, um, well, much later we got to find out about them, so I might as well just give out their name. Mr. William Giang and Mr. Nura uh, Jubrin, they were both um, um, employees at state-owned radio TV corporation working, working in an engineering department. So they just got up and decided to fix the ventilators in uh, Jaws University Teaching Hospital. That was after they brought out the announcement that, look, we are free, we can actually handle these um, corona cases. So the man, Mr. Gian, heard President Trump uh, talking on TV, asking for um, ventilators and maybe even saw on Twitter where our minister was asking about Musk. <laughs> you know? So um, he read up, he got um, curious, read up on it and wanted to find out, you know, what is this ventilator? And then he called a friend who worked at the University of Teaching Hospital to figure out if... Um, if they had any, he wanted to see what a ventilator, he had never seen a ventilator prior to that time. So with his engineering experience, the friend told him, oh, we have a couple in the hospital, but it's not working. So he just looked at it and figured I might, I could, with my engineering background, I could do one or two things. And that's how him and his um, colleague, uh, Nura, was was able to, to fix it. But you know what I find interesting is that prior to this time, he had never seen a ventilator. So he like it's so like I'm just working that's, on that's something, to tell but I'm you clueless that we have on a it. A lot of brilliant minds. And Absolutely, trust me, there are a million and one Nura, Nura and um, what's his other name? Gyan. William Gyan. Yeah. yeah, there are a million and one of them out there. So mm -hmm. and sometimes when we try to call our leaders out, we're not calling them out because we are just we just feel like calling them out. We're calling them to see the what we have. And, you know, embrace what we have and take advantage of what we have. Right. We have great minds in Nigeria. So why do we have to go far to solve our own problems? We truly have great minds. If we just need the willpower to be able to, you know, to rise above certain things yeah, in this country. Absolutely. All right. So um, my story is quite interesting as well. And it's also on the positive note. Um, the World he Health Organization, they're commending Nigeria, mm. you know, saying that, I mean, it's, it's been, um, 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 it's been, a good way. I mean, we have curbed Curb, this yeah. this um, coronavirus. In we've been able to, in their words, 
the response has been remarkable and we've been able to curb it in a and um, the numbers are low. Although yeah. this report came out yesterday, they were saying as at that time we had about two death tolls. But I, I hear, um, I saw now that it's risen up to four and 190 or 210 cases or so. So, but, but we, yeah. our numbers are relatively low compared to their projections. So they are really happy that um, it's not. Um, we are able to manage the pandemic. Yeah, you know, like the and fears that they were having before that would we be able to handle. You know this kind of pandemic yeah. yeah and i think that list goes beyond nigeria because even our neighboring country um our brother or we share a brother <laughs> border ghana mm. ghana i was reading a couple of days ago that they had um um, um released 11, 11 victims have recovered you know and generally cases in africa i think is like 23 deaths uh, well, in West Africa, I'm not sure about South Africa and, 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 and other countries. So I think we're, we're doing a great job um, curbing I it. just want to use this means to appeal to whoever that is out there because I read a story that NASA shared on the group, mm. very heartbreaking story, a 55-year-old man that um, died of um, COVID-19. He died of the mm -hmm. virus in Luth. He died there. Oh, and, I read you the know, story. He was asked... If he had any travel history, he said no. He, he didn't it. have he didn't have travel history until when I think the case was almost getting to the point where he could no longer hide it. He now said he he, he went. I mean, he traveled to. He was coming back from Holland. Mm -hmm. It is unfair. I mean, be be kind and be considerate. You know, my friend always teaches consideration. Yeah. Be kind and be considerate to other people. Now look at the exposure. I'm just thinking about the numbers. There was a doctor that attended to you, or doctors. There were nurses that attended to you. There were health workers, cleaners that attended to you. Mm -hmm. It is unfair. If you know you have a travel history, um, coronavirus is not death. It it's can not. be cured. We've had more more people being discharged. The governor also announced how many people, I think four people just yesterday, yeah. that were discharged from the hospital. It's not a death sentence. It is only fair for you just to say, you know honest what? And be honest others. and help others. Right. Because this virus can only thrive if we are, you know, if we are moving around careless. and spreading it and we're careless. Please. Right. Because that, that story really broke my heart and I needed to mention that. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. All right, so um, today, as we said earlier, we're talking advertising. COVID-19 is no longer a thing of, uh, you know, like maybe Western is here in Nigeria. It's all over the and news. And the entire, entire, what's it called? Event industry is shut down. Everything, makeup, ev all the entire value chain, all gone. So we have um, an expert with us. His name is Yinka Debayo. He'll be joining us right after the break to discuss this. Please stay with us. <laughs> 